Regain your financial freedom by grabbing the book Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power, an Amazon bestseller written by none other than Dr. Boyce Watkins. Grab the book now. Also, Heating Up Summer 2023, Be One the Movie, starring Dr. Claude Anderson, Madam President, and Riza Islam. Atlanta, Georgia, get ready. The All-Black National Convention is coming your way October 2023. We had the privilege of attending an All-Black National Convention. It was an absolutely life-changing experience to get a free Dr. Boyce Watkins Black Business School training on how to make money without working. Text the word STOCK to 31996. Right, let's talk about Kodak, man, because Kodak Black, bro, he was on his live stream the other day, which he goes live frequently, as do a lot of people in the industry, and he was nodding off. And I'm not trying to put anything on anybody name, but it looked like he was dope nodding. Dope nodding could be anything from fentanyl, heroin, pills, Xanax, Whatever. That's what it looked like to me. You know what I mean? And and what kind of makes me even think that it was that is because if you remember when he took his drug test, he had fentanyl in his system, right? And he's struggling. Uh, probably struggling with an addiction, struggling, you know, with a young man, a lot of things on his on his uh plate. He liked to get high. Shouldn't be turned on the camera, but he does, and you know, shit, you're falling asleep on the camera, man. Um Cool, that's been a guy that you liked a lot over the last few years, man. Obviously a very talented artist. I think he he's a guy that, that's a character too as well. I think he's way more intelligent than he puts on. But I do think he's struggling with something like right now. But his fans seem worried. How do you feel about the video? How do you feel about Kodak and his um, issue? I don't like it. We don't know. We weren't there. We have no idea if he took anything or not. And understanding that he has a very busy schedule being the person he is. I'm sure he's running around on tour. So you can obviously be tired. But I would hope. That he wasn't that much of a social media whore to where exhausted he would turn it on <laughs> and just starts falling asleep because he's so tired. Or you fucking high as a giraffe's ass. Yeah. You jump on live and out of your control, you start nodding. Um, it's either one or the two. And I, I seem to kind of lean toward the latter because this brother's been through a lot. Like you said, he had fentanyl in his system. Going through shit. Who knows what he's going through behind the scenes. Right. And the way that these young rappers cope with that type of shit is through alcohol, through drugs, through Absolutely. different coping mechanisms to get them completely out of their reality. And it's definitely warranted to be worried. He's young. He's very talented. But he ain't bulletproof. He's not invincible. And we've seen talented, young, smart rappers die too soon. Because for whatever reason, we couldn't get the reins or somebody couldn't just help that little extra mile, go that extra mile to try to get that person some help. So I don't want to see that happen for Kodak, man. I don't. Fentanyl's a coin flip. You want to say he'll be cool, but with that shit, you never know. One bad hit, and that could be your ass. We've seen that happen. So I just, I just hope that he gets help if, in fact, he needs help. Yeah. And the people around him in his circle kind of... Throw him some tough love and, and get him that. Well, they said, they, I don't know if you know this, but they said like fentanyl is a leading cause of death between people in 18 and like 45. Ooh, something like that. I'm something like that. That's a big, big wow. gap, man. It's it's like it's almost like a, a form of chemical warfare. Yeah. You know, you have your addicts out there and you know they want to do what they want to do. They never had to worry about really dying. I mean, you can OD off things, yeah. anything. You know what I mean? But you got people that's been doing shit for 20 years. Yeah. And they're alive, they're smoking crack, whatever they're doing. But not now. It's like, now it's like you get the wrong batch. And you could really, you know, be dead. But then again, I'm also hearing, because I know if people that work in like clinics and things like that, right? You, that's what they want. Like, if it ain't got the Fetty, they don't want it. That, that, that's crazy, man. It's like, that, that's the epidemic out here, man. And um, I'll say to the kids and, you know, people that's listening in, man, it ain't like before where... Somebody might have had an ecstasy or anything, you know what I mean? And you just you, you try, you have a fun at a party. You can't do that shit no more. Like, don't take nothing nobody gives you. Don't even take anything at this point, man. If you ain't buying it from, like, a dispensary or something like that, you got to be very, very careful because now it could cost you your life. That's crazy, man. Especially no more recreational front. Yeah, especially the youth. Yeah, man. They got colored pills and shit out there that look like candy. Man, come on, man. It's crazy. It's scary. Very scary, and 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 it's nothing we could do about it. But nope. try to game as much as we can and just be careful. 
can't go out to a party no more and grab whatever. Nope. You know what I'm saying? And chill and thinking you good because that could be your last. You can't go out and grab a bag of bud from somebody that you don't know because you never know what's in it and that could be your last. That's crazy. It's very different than it used to be. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, just game and be careful. I know I'm gaming. You know what I mean? My teenage son on that shit. Like, and it's almost yeah. to a point where you got to just kind of break the barrier and it's like, yo, if you want to smoke, if you're thinking about doing something, just come holler at me. Yep. Real come shit. Come at me. We'll talk about it. Whatever, whatever. But don't go out there asking for nothing. Right. They ain't got what dad, you know what I mean, could get. So don't worry about that. But it, it's crazy. Man. And peer pressure is wild. Yeah. I know a lot of times I have friends and they was going to buy a 40. And we going to get a 40 and smoke a black and mild. I remember first he started smoking paper and shit, like just regular old paper and shit. Then it was the Black and Miles. And, you know, we used to send the Indian guy to the store to get us to 40. He was a drunk. And next thing you know, you're drinking and you're smoking and shit like that. You can't, it's not like that no more, man. It's like, it's crazy, man. But yeah, that's the shit the young kids, you know, teenagers, that's the shit they get into. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's so accessible to them. Yeah. It was there. Yep. I seen a bus get uh, a confiscate. It had to be at least 60 fucking vapes. Oh, that's yeah. Middle school, bro. Wasn't even high school. Damn, sixty something vapes sitting in there. Everybody was vaping. So. Yeah, shit, wild, bro. It's deep. It's deep, mm-hmm. man. But uh, your Kodak, man, what's the best for the young brother? Um, he should really go try to get some help right now. You got the resources. Um, try to get some help if, if that indeed is the case. Um, I will probably say yeah, but you never know, man. Yeah, you never know. Hopefully, it gets better, man. But moving on, Michael Orr. We interview Michael Orr. A couple years back, if people don't know who Michael Orr is, he was the um, the main focal point of the movie Blindside. Came out a couple years back, maybe about 10, 11 years ago now. Right. Um, Leanne Tui, she was played by Sandra Bullock. I think she got an Academy Award for the role. That movie did absolutely amazing numbers, gave highlight to the story of Michael Orr, and highlighted these two people, these two saints, in Sean and Leanne Tui. Well, it comes out a couple, uh, what, a couple days ago now. Michael Orr said that was some bullshit. Damn. Didn't happen. They did not adopt me. And now they've made millions and millions of dollars off my story with it not even being true, and I haven't received a dime. Now, he talked about it a little bit on our platform. He didn't go into depth like this, but he said the movie wasn't what it what it portrayed to be. Right. He basically said that in a nutshell, that that shit wasn't the way it really went. But what do you think about this, man? This is, this is crazy that we got to talk to him and talk about this in particular, and now years later, we see this coming out. Nah, yeah, it's crazy as hell. It definitely is crazy as hell. Like I said, we did that interview. You know, we never thought that it would, you know, um, get that type of attention. Because at first, it-